Well, hello everyone. It is April. I am coming at you older, probably not wiser, but I am now 40. Ho, ho, ho. Wow. Uh, the lead up to 40 was a little bit anxiety inducing, if I'm being honest. I don't know why it was like such a big number in my mind. And it is a big number. I will say that. Uh, that said, I'm here. I, everything's okay. I made it to the other side and I am officially 40. I wanted to share with you what I got for my birthday. Uh, first of all, I got vaccinated. I got my first vaccine on my birthday, which was incredible. And it was so funny because I went to a little pharmacy a little bit out of town for me. I, I went out to North Gore to get my shot. And after it was done, the pharmacists actually handed me a bunch of flowers. And I was like, I'm moving here. If pharmacists give you flowers, uh, it turned out that it was one of my dear friends sending me flowers. I got so many beautiful flowers delivered to my door. It was wonderful. My sister got me this gorgeous um, rose bush that's like a climbing rose bush. First plant for my house. I was very lucky, let me just say, uh, and it didn't stop there. I treated myself, I was treated. I'm gonna share with you all of the bits and bobs that I got. First, I'm going to talk about some bookish things because I got some bookish things for my birthday. First is actually an art print that my parents, I don't know if they got it made or what, but this is so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, you can see in the reflection, the tripod. Once my library is all done and prepared in the other room, I'm moving rooms if you didn't know, uh, I'm going to put this up somewhere. Right now it's on top of my bookcase. I love this so much. I thought that was so thoughtful. They also got me an Amazon gift card. So I bought myself some books. I'm going to share them with you. Before we get into the books, I will say that I have books. I've got jewelry bits a little later. I got makeup. I bought myself the makeup. But anyway, uh, let's start with the books. I got a bunch of Amazon gift cards, so I treated myself. But then also I was kindly gifted a bunch of books, which I haven't opened. Now, Barry did make me open this one because it was from Rachel, one of my friends, and she wrote, Happy birthday, my lovely friend. You are such a gift to my life. I love you forever. Happy 40th. Love, Rachel. Now, I am really excited about this. It is The Kite Runner. I haven't read The Kite Runner. Can you believe that? There's The Kite Runner, A, Sp uh, a Thousand Splendid Suns, I think, by the same author. And Rachel and I are going to read this together. This follows two little boys living in Afghanistan, I believe. One of them is a wealthy boy. His father is a wealthy Kabul merchant. And then he's best friends with his son, who is his servant and constant companion. Um, anyway, they are best friends and it's about their experience living in Afghanistan. I don't really know a lot about this book, but I can tell you right now, I am extremely excited to read it with Rachel. So let's read the first line of The Kite Runner. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, 1, December 2001. I became what I am today at the age of 12 on a frigid overcast day in the winter of 1975. Interesting. I can't wait to read that. So I'll be reading that a little bit later this month with Rachel. Oh, that was so nice of her. And then, okay, I've got two, two packages. I did not order these. So I am thinking that they might be from you guys. Which you guys did not have to do that. I feel very, very spoiled. So I'm gonna open those now. Okay, what's the first one? Let's open, let's open. Yes. Hello. Oh, oh, wait, I gotta look at the. I gotta look. First of all, it's horror store. 
by Grady Hendrix, who I adore Grady Hendrix. I can't believe I haven't read this. Okay, who is this from? Lisa. Lisa. It says, happy birthday, April, from Lisa. Lisa, that's so kind of you. I am so excited to read Horror Store because it's a horror book that like it melds horror with an Ikea catalog. I don't even know how that works, but it gets more and more disturbing as you go on. Like this just sounds like so much fun. I absolutely love Grady Hendrix. Okay, let's read the first line. Oh, that is disturbing <laughs> just to cover itself. It was dawn and the zombies were stumbling through the parking lot streaming toward the massive beige box at the far end. I love that. I think that is a five star first line because you're gripped right away. You want to know what happens. I'm going to have to pick this up pronto. Oh my gosh, Lisa, thank you so much. That's, I'm really excited. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, I got to put this. I always, when you guys send me books, I always keep the little paper in the book so that I remember. Um, it's just like as a little keepsake for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Oh, let's move on to the next one. All right. Oh, nope. Ha, I got it. I did. I got it. Finally. Oh, what's this? Oh, I don't think it came with. Oh, no, I don't know who this is from. Oh, here it is. Oh, they put it in. Okay, good, good, good. This is The House Opposite by Barbara Noble. And this is from Judy. Oh, my gosh. Happy 40th, April. Uh, take it from one who has been there, done that. The 40s are a great decade of life. Hope you enjoy this book. It was the most interesting to me from your wish list. Thank you for all you do. XO from Judy. Judy, you are such a sweetheart. I'm going to have to write you guys as soon as I'm finished filming this video. Oh, okay. So the house opposite, I had never heard of Barbara Noble before, but Jen Campbell, beloved Jen Campbell, thank goodness for Jen Campbell. She was reading uh, another book by Barbara noble i think it's called doreen and i was interested in that as well and then she started reading this one and it's a really interesting take on world war ii it's during the blitz and i think we follow a woman named elizabeth simpson and she is a secretary she's having an affair with her married boss meanwhile the bliss is happening like bombs are going off everywhere and I think they take those opportunities to have their affair, if I'm not mistaken. It sounds really, really neat. Um, and it's about the blitz and the, ba the bomb damage. And what's so fascinating about um, this to me is that Barbara Noble lived, I believe, lived in London during the blitz. She knows what it's like. And one thing that I found so neat about The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson was learning about the Blitz and how people living in London adapted and really were able to just kind of go on with their day and their lives in the midst of a war. Very fascinating. So I can't not wait to read this. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Judy. Let's read the first line of The House Opposite. Oh, whoopsie. Okay, chapter one, chapter one, here we go. Carter came into Elizabeth Simpson's office at a quarter to six, ostensibly to borrow her her paste pot, but actually because he hoped that the sight of him would recall to her mind the evening post. Okay, I don't know if that's a first, like a five star first line for me, but very, very eager to read this. Um, I'm really interested in reading some more classics that aren't incredibly well known and this is right in there oh my goodness thank you so much judy oh i'm so spoiled okay now i'm going to dive into the books that i bought myself again i told you i got a really lovely amazon gift cards from my parents from my boss fred so i spoiled myself like you do 
And the first book that I put in my cart is a book very much influenced by Simon of Savage Reads. It's nonfiction. And he doesn't read a lot of nonfiction, but he's gone on and on about this one in particular. This is How to Fail by Elizabeth Day. It says, everything I've learned from things going wrong. And I think Elizabeth actually has a podcast surrounding this topic. And it is literally about failure. It's about the hard things that happen in life and how they can actually make you stronger. And I think Elizabeth goes into her own life um, there's quite a bit of a, it's a bit of a memoir through failure. And I, I think that's important for people to read because we have so much pressure to be perfect. There's so much pressure to achieve, achieve, achieve. And if failure is bound to happen. And I just think that this is going to be a really good book for me to learn from. So how to fail. Let's read the first line. How to fail at fitting in. When I was four, my family moved to Northern Ireland. Okay, not a five-star first line. It's not, I'm sorry. It's not, but I'm still gonna read it. Next is, I actually have quite a few horror books on this list. There's something about moving into summer. I really wanna read horror. Uh, so a few of these might actually end up on my summer TBR. We'll see. Uh, but you guys know, I read a Darcy Coates, became obsessed. She writes like haunted house stories right up my alley right up my alley so I wanted to pick up the full Croft ghosts by Darcy Coates and this is about Tara and Kyle their mother is hospitalized and they really have nowhere to go so they are sent to stay with their only remaining relatives which are their elderly grandparents and I mean that should be comforting right like you should expect like tea and cakes and like lots of spoiling and maybe some doilies, but it turns out that their grandparents are a little bit weird. The house itself is weird. There are lots of like nooks and crannies. And there's, I think, a ghost at the house and their grandparents over time end up acting stranger and stranger. And I picked this one because I don't know if any of you have watched The Visitor or The Visitors, um, which is a horror movie. Well, I loved that one and this gave me those vibes. So I thought I would pick this one up. Let's read the first line of the Fullcroft Ghosts. Specks of rain hit the windshield and evaporated within seconds. It's not a five star first line. Still gonna read it, still gonna have a good time. Next is another horror book. This is like a classic horror book um, that they're actually putting into print again. Uh, they stopped printing Michael McDowell books and publishing his work and they're slowly starting to bring them all out again but I think this is like the quintessential Michael McDowell that everyone loves. This is The Elementals and this follows a family who have these summer homes. There are three of them and um, like one of the families lives in one for the summer, another one of the families, like they're all related, they're sisters or brothers or something along those lines. They live in the other. And then there's one that is just vacant and it's abandoned. It's, it's kind of gone into disrepair and really just a bunch of sand is filling the home and it gets creepy. It gets creepy. I think some of the children go and like explore that abandoned house and bad things ensue. And it just sounds wonderful. I think Jordan Lean Reads has talked about this. A ton of people like Katie, I think from Chapter Stacks has talked about this. I just, I knew I needed to read it. So now was the time to pick it up. So let's read the first line of The Elementals. The prologue. In the middle of a desolate Wednesday afternoon in the sweltering days of May, a handful of mourners were gathered in the church dedicated to St. Jude Thaddeus in Mobile, Alabama. I wouldn't say that's a five star first line, but I'm getting some atmospheric vibes from it. So I'm excited about that. Did I just do that? I think I did. <sighs> okay, I think this is the last horror book in the bunch. Um, this is Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. Now, 
This is often compared to It by Stephen King. I read It, didn't love it, if I'm being honest. It was long, there was that weird scene that ruined the whole book for me. <laughs> um, but I heard Vicky over at, is it Vicky's Book Nook? Did she change it to Vicky's Book Nook? I'm pretty sure. She raved about this. She just said that this was wonderful. It actually is blurbed by Stephen King on the cover. And this takes place in the summer of 1960. We do follow a group of kids. They live in Illinois. And it's about these kids just enjoying their summer, just generally. Um, however, the whole town recognizes that when a bell goes off in the evening, everyone needs to go into their homes because there's something lurking outside. And I think all of these kids are hunting down a monster, which is why it's compared to it. Now it is big. It's not as big as it. This is like 500 pages, but like tiny, tiny font. Why is it so tiny? Uh, but I've heard very good things. So I'm going to read the first line of Summer of Night. Chapter one, old central school still stood upright, holding its secrets and silences firmly within. I like that, but I don't think it's a five star first line. Okay, three more books. Um, next is a memoir um, that I think is really important for me to read. This is Men We've Reaped by Jasmine Ward. And this is about five black men in her life that all died before their time. Uh, I don't know who they are. I think one of them is her brother, I'm just reading that now. But it's about how, how these black men were dealt an unfair hand, essentially, in their lives. And she examines how racism um, ended these men's life, lives in one way or another. It sounds really, really hard hitting. I've heard that it's hard hitting, but I also think it's really, really important for me to read it. Uh, so I picked up Men We've Reaped. Let's read the first line, the prologue. Whenever my mother drove us from coastal Mississippi to New Orleans to visit my father on the weekend, she would say, lock the doors. That actually is a five star first line because why it brings you in right, right away. I would say that's a five star first line. That sounds really good. I know it's going to be so hard, but I want to read it. Next is another book that I think will be hard, but I've heard really wonderful things. However, it's really not talked about a lot. It's World War II historical fiction. This is the last thing you surrender by Leonard Pitts. Now, Leonard won the Pulitzer Prize. I don't believe this won the Pulitzer Prize. This was, I, I believe, published in 2019. Now, it's a little confusing. So I'm going to read the little blurb. I don't do this a lot, uh, but I, I want to get it right. It takes place in World War II. An affluent white Marine survives Pearl Harbor at the cost of a black messman's life, only to be sent, racked with guilt, to the Pacific and taken prisoner by the Japanese. A young black wo woman, widowed by the same events at Pearl, finds unexpected opportunity and a dangerous friendship in a segregated Alabama shipyard feeding the war. A black man who, as a child, saw his parents brutally lynched, is conscripted to fight Nazis for a country he despises and discovers a new kind of patriotism in the all-black 761st Tank Battalion. And it essentially, it explores the powerful moral struggles of individuals from a divided nation. What does it take to change someone's mind about race? What does it take for a country to move forward transformed? And I mean, this that question is still so prevalent and relevant today, sadly. And I, I just think I'm gonna learn a lot from this book. So that is the last thing you surrender. Let's read the first line. One, he was dreaming of home when the explosion came. That's a five-star first line. That sounds amazing. 
Ooh, okay, so those are all of the books that I bought. Now, I did forget in my May haul, I forgot a book because I was in the middle of reading it. I have since finished it. I will tell you all of my thoughts in my wrap up, but this is Andy Weir's new one, Hail Mary. This was sent, kindly sent to me by Penguin Random House Canada. Thank you guys so much for sending this over. Now, Andy Weir wrote The Martian, which I really enjoyed. This is sci-fi. I don't read a ton of sci-fi. However, I can always get behind Andy Weir. It's very complicated. Um, in this book, we follow a man uh, in a spaceship. He wakes up and he's alone. The other passengers, crew members on the spaceship are all dead. Now, he has also forgotten his memory. <laughs> And uh, he's trying to remember the past, you know, months of his life. Why is he on a spaceship? How did he get here? And slowly he gets his memory back and he realizes that the reason that he is here is because Earth is going to die. And he is the one thing, the one person who can save the Earth. The sun is dying. He has to. He has to step in and I will say he meets somebody along the way. Loved that. Let's read the first line of Project Hail Mary. Chapter one, what's two plus two? Not a five star first line. Those are all the books. So I will move right into jewelry and I will move into some makeup -y bits that I bought myself. Um, Barry. Barry got me a Tiffany. I've never had a Tiffany anything in my life before. Never ever. And Barry got me Tiffany. He got me these earrings. They're pearl earrings. And I think they're Picasso from the Picasso collection. They're pearl with gold. And I was shocked when I opened this. I will tell you that. So I felt unbelievably spoiled and it took me I, I, I was very I was shocked I would just say I was shocked pleasantly surprised pleasantly I had told Barry that the only thing that I want for my birthday is a dog we're hoping to get a dog at some point um and I've fallen in love with these cocker spaniels English cocker spaniels but there are no puppies right now from the breeder that I'll be getting the dog from um so that'll probably be a next year thing so in the meantime what in the world okay so now i'm going to move on to the makeupy bits that i bought i just i wanted to spoil myself a little bit you only turn 40 once if you're lucky so i picked up this makeup forever hd light capturing self-setting concealer I'm wearing it today. I really enjoy this. I was heavily influenced by Alana Davidson. If you're not following her and you're into makeup at all, she's Canadian. She's fabulous. She posts so often. I don't know how she does it. Um, and she's gorgeous and has very good taste in makeup. So loving this concealer for sure. I also picked up uh, a Merit Beauty blush. This is in the color Mood and it is lovely it's um like a it's almost like a burgundy kind of color and i'm wearing that today as well and i really really enjoy it i will say that it doesn't stay on your face that long <laughs> like it's it's not something that will stay stick on kind of melts into your face at least mine um, so you do have to touch it up throughout the day, but that's okay. I don't mind. And you can also use it on your lips, which is fantastic. The rest is all lip stuff. Another Lana influenced item. I got a lip pencil by Mac called Strip Down. Now it is quite brown and I think it looks better on her than it does me. I probably should have gotten like Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury or something along those lines, but I'm wearing it today and I do enjoy it. I should probably have like a nude, brownie nude lip liner anyway. So I picked that up and then I got two lip glosses. The first lip gloss I got is like just a juicy, bright apple candy, candy apple kind of color. This is by Tower 28. 
um, and this is called Spicy. And it is wonderful. I really like this, super comfortable on the lips, not sticky, which is always a bonus. So I got that. And then the last uh, lip thing that I got is another thing by Merit Beauty. This is a lip oil called Sangria. I think it's meant to be a tint. I'm wearing it right now. It, it doesn't tint my lips. I'll just reapply here. Um, I personally think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this in the fall. It feels like a bit more of a fall color to me, but I really enjoy it. It feels very comfortable on the lips. So I, I've treated myself to a few things. Felt so spoiled. Oh my goodness. Um, I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me and finding out what I got for my birthday. Uh, I feel super lucky. Super lucky. Uh, to have received all of these things and also just to be 40. Like I reached that age. Not everybody does. So I feel, feel good. I feel good. It's okay to turn 40 in the end. I'm fine. Uh, I hope you guys are doing really well and I'll chat with you very soon. Bye guys.